Today is Monday, June the 5th, 2023. And this week, I, I want to talk about healing. Something that I believe is uh, so important in the day and age in which we live. And, and I know we're dispersed 2,000 years from Jesus' ascension to the Father. So mainly what I want to do is I, I desire to share what the Word of God teaches about God healing people. Obviously, I can't cover all of, of the theology of that in, in uh, one short week. I'm, but I, I like to say I adhere to the truth of God's Word. And this is what the Bible states. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17. So I want you to hear the Word of God concerning healing. And I'm going to use some selections from Matthew 8 and, and 9. Here's what it says in the first uh, 17 verses of Matthew 8. When he come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Wow. Listen to the faith of this leper. It's like a matter of fact. If, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus put out his hand, touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. And immediately his leper was cleansed. His leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. There's the willingness of God to heal again. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west, sitting down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Now, when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. And he touched her hand and the fever left her. Then she arose and, he, and served them. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Isaiah the prophet saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. We notice so clearly here how Jesus is willing to heal. Now listen to this, first eight verses of Matthew 9. So he got into a boat, crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, some be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God who had given such power to men. Then I'm going down to verse 18 and, and reading down considerably through the rest of this chapter till verse 35. Well, he spoke these things to them. Behold, a ruler came and worshiped him, saying, My daughter has just died but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. <laughs> Did you hear that? Th this ruler, 
says to Jesus, my daughter's dead, but if you come and lay a hand on her, she'll live. Do you know that about Jesus, that he could raise the dead? I'm going on verse 19. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that very hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing, because they hire mourners for funeral services in that day and age, he said to them, make room, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the crowd was put out, he went in, took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went out to all that land. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be unto you. Catch that phrase. According to your faith, let it be unto you. Their eyes were open. And Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows this, but knows this. And when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. And as they went out, behold, they brought to him a man mute and demon possessed. When the demon was cast out, the mute spoke. The multitudes marveled, saying, It's never seen like this in Israel. But the Pharisees said he cast out demons by the ruler of demons. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He healed them all. In Mark 16, 17, and 18, taking just a few phrases out of those two scriptures, these, find, these signs shall follow those who believe. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You who believe will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Do you believe that? Have you tested it personally to see if it's true? I believe in divine healing. A supernatural act of God on our behalf to restore physical health, whether from a birth defect, an infection, a disease, or an accident, whatever the cause for the lack of health. To the God we serve, there is nothing impossible. I want you to have faith for yourself, for your family, for friends, and whomever God places in your path for you to pray for. The Bible is clear. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. I pray today because the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword that your faith has been stimulated by the word of God because faith comes that way and that you're ready to pray for healing. I'm gonna pray right now. I don't know what your need might be. You do know. Maybe you personally need healing. Someone in your family needs it. Maybe a close friend needs it. Maybe God's going to put someone in your path today for you to pray for, for healing. Do you believe he can do it? Are you willing to obey? Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe that your word is true. Our faith is increased because of your word. Our faith is strengthened because of it. And we pray for supernaturally, in the name of Jesus, for healing. And I'm praying specifically for a woman named Denise who's had surgery for a brain tumor. And you are the God who brings complete deliverance in your name for the glory of your name. May she never have any residual effect from that tumor. May all that and its substance be cleansed from her body. And may she be whole for the number of her days that you before have established. And I praise you for doing it. And I thank you for increasing our faith as we continue to just look at your word and believe and trust you for the supernatural in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and have faith. Use it. Exercise it. Trust God to heal and do the impossible. God bless you as you do so for his glory. Have a great day.